I'm Brand Ambassador Brian Legaglio. Today we're going to look at some common mistakes my students make with stick welding and how to fix them. All right, this is what you should be seeing in your hood. Everything's flowing. The flux is behind my molten pool. I have a nice 10 degree work angle on my electro drag angle. Equal leg length. Travel speed is consistent and controlled, not erratic. Before we look at this, let me show you some common mistakes. First common issue, arc length. First common issue is always arc length. All right guys, I'm gonna establish my arc. I'm gonna get my puddle nice and fluid. And as I get to, I have a little mark right here at Filton. I'm gonna start extending my arc length. See it's nice and controlled, here we go. Now it's blowing all over the place, shooting these out, it's hard to control. I'm gouging the top plate. You can even hear it. And watch when I set up back down. This guy's now controllable. I have a tight arc length. I'm not fighting it anymore. I have minimal, if any, undercut. You know, the, the biggest thing with this is muscle memory. And I, I remember as a, a student, I was, I had to extend my arms or um, feed that rod and deliberately. And as time builds, that, that muscle memory is built. And I, I don't know that I'm doing that anymore, but as a new student, new welder, you have to, like, that has to be a part of your, you know, your process is you're losing your electrode. It's being, you know, consumed. Yeah. It's a consumable. And that, that's, you know, that's one of the biggest struggles with these guys is that arm movement, I don't feel anymore. They do, and they have to, you know, deliberately do that every time. Once I initiated and I got my puddle started, it was relatively smooth, nice tight arc. I have equal leg length in between the top plate and the bottom plate. And then I don't think you can really see it anymore, but I had a little soapstone mark right here. And that showed me where to start lifting up. As I lift it up, I really have to fight my muscle memory. The arc becomes erratic. Um, it's not controlled anymore. My voltage is increasing and my puddle width is increasing also. And while it's doing that, not only is it increasing the width, it starts gouging this top plate. And I extended my length a little bit more here and start shooting BBs out. There's some significant undercut right here, right there. And right here was another piece of uh, mark from Soapstone. I indicated they'd come back down. The transition from like right here to here, there's almost no undercut, at least none I can see. But the puddle just becomes so much more controlled. The, the characteristics I can see what I'm doing right here as this is going. The flux is flowing in front of it. The puddle is erratic. Both puddles, uh, the, the flux and the molten metal, are very erratic and it's hard to control. Tighten up my arc, it lays down, it's controllable. And it's actually a pleasure to weld at that point. I'm gonna fire up, I'm gonna do normal cruising speed, and then I'm gonna hit my soapstone mark, and I'm gonna pick up travel speed pretty dramatically. When, when they first start, welding students when they strike that arc they start looking at it like a wick on on fireworks and everything becomes a rush you light a firework you run away from it these guys they see that light they see the smoke they see the fire they get excited they have to start moving where realistically you have to be very controlled very very smooth very your transitions need to be very deliberate they're going and it's just it's crowning up it's not laying down or they they'll completely jump a little spot and it, there's boogers all over the place. It, it's not nice and smooth. And then once it clicks, it's like a, it's, a, it's almost a switch. It, it'll click and it goes from, oh, I can slow down. I have time. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna blow a hole in this thing. I'm not going to, whatever, whatever the case may be that they're they're building the scenario in their head of what it's gonna do if they don't rush. They see that they have time. They see that they can control. It's not something very dramatic's gonna happen if they slow down. 
if they're a little bit more deliberate with it, they, they see that as I'm traveling, like on a T-joint, I'll rest my flux on the top of the plate, but I'll have, you know, more of a downward angle. And as I'm going, I'm, I'm watching that puddle build. I've been watching that arc for long enough that I'm filling in as I'm going, so it's not undercutting. Where my students beginning, I'll show them that. I'll show them that they can rest a flux on it. And they think if they're touching or resting their flux, it's in a stick or it's in a blow through. All right, guys, let's look at this first. I fire it up, nice and controlled, you know, to show a decent, what it's supposed to look like. And then right when I came up to this uh, soapstone mark, we, we remade it so you can see it now. I picked up my travel speed. And as I'm going, I have little indications in it. Um, I'm starting to get this V pattern in it instead of a nice round pattern. That, that's showing me my travel speed is a little too fast, but I have undercut starting, starting to propagate on the top. It's underfilled. I should have used a whole rod in this pass and I use a half of a rod. This should be more pronounced, more convex, and this is straight across. Right here we have a little void. And as I'm coming here, right here, little slag inclusion. I, I could clean that out, but under it, it's just gonna be a void. I got some significant undercut right in here. And right in here, some BBs. You know, I'm, I'm not carrying the puddle the way I needed. That's the firework effect. People think they have to move fast because they're gonna blow through. I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a, a wide bead on a flat plate and let's turn it up. That was at 125 amps. We're gonna run it at 160 amps because I encourage my students to learn the limits, to see what this material can handle. And that helps you in the long run, that, that teaches you. So let's run hot and slow and let's see what happens. All right guys, I set up some soapstone marks. I'm gonna go from side to side at 160 amps to show that this plate can handle that. You know, it's not ideal, but this plate will take it. That was 160 amps right on this edge. That, that's, that's pretty good proof right there that this plate will handle, this 3 8 plate will handle 160 amps. This rod, it, you know, it's not, right in the comfort zone of 160 amps isn't real comfortable for this rod running it but look at the end crater like we're not we're not super deep i mean we're we're wide it's big but we weren't even close to blowing through this plate and i would encourage anyone that's getting into welding and you're learning how to stick weld try this exercise it, it really puts everything in perspective for you common stick welding issue number three angle Sometimes people push, sometimes they pull, but they should be dragging. So we're gonna talk about getting locked up here. Um, a lot of my students, um, I'm a big fan of bracing. It takes a lot of little, little motions out. But when I tell them to brace or I show them how I brace, I'm standing, my, weight, my weight's on my feet. <laughs> a lot of people will put their weight on their arms, so when I go to make this weld here, I'm gonna just make a pad weld. There's a straight line with some soapstone on it. When I put my weight here, it locks me in and I can get about halfway. And then as I'm coming, now my angle is starting to get to a point where now I'm pushing. Pushing with flux, you can do it, but as a new welder, you don't have enough technique or muscle memory built up to overcome uh, the scenario you just put yourself in. So if you can stand your weights on your feet, although I'm gonna brace on this table, I can still move. Don't lock yourself in. So I'll show you what happens when you do lock yourself in. We're gonna push the puddle a little bit. All right guys, I'm locked in. My weight's on my hand right now. I'm gonna, I'll be able to strike off pretty comfortably. I'm going. I'm not having any problems yet. Going pretty good. Now my angle is starting to change. And now I no longer have a drag angle. I'm straight in now. I have my weight on my hand, so I can't follow that line anymore. And now I'm pushing it. So I have to extend my arc length to keep it going. If I keep a tight arc length as I'm pushing, it starts having a problem. 
I initiated my arc and it's going really well. I'm very comfortable at this point. And then you see as I'm starting to get right around here, profile change, I'm, I'm less convex, I'm more flat. Um, I do like this profile of the bead. It's, uh, it's convex, it's nice, it's, it's wet in. It's not overly crowned up in the middle. But then we start getting to this flat spot right here. And that, that's because I'm, I'm starting to change angles. I'm not having that drag angle, that ideal drag angle anymore. And that's still acceptable. There's nothing really wrong with that. And then I got right here. And I'm starting to transition from a drag angle to a push angle. Not only am I pushing the puddle slightly, I can no longer go into a straight line because I, I fixed my hands into a single point and I'm only going to be able to have an arc, a, you know, a semicircle per se. And as I'm coming across, I can no longer follow my straight line because all my weights on my hands, unless I stopped and made a restart. Now what we're going to do is we're going to draw another straight line. So I have something to follow and I'm going to show you a better way to distribute your weight. So you don't lock yourself in. So as I'm going here, my, my puddle is very controllable. I'm not locked in. So if I need to move my hands, all my weight's on my feet. I'm real light on my hands, all my weight's on my feet. It's, this isn't a problem going from beginning to end and keeping a proper work angle the whole time. Little trick, if you're coming to the end of the plate, come to the end, come back, do a little swirl, pop out. That one stuck. Come it. on, man. <laughs> I was able to move my hands as needed for this weld. The difference here is so dramatic, and I see this a lot from you guys, is this, this arc. We're in the business of straight lines and this is what, this is the goal and locking yourself in, like putting yourself in a position where you can't move. If you do that, you need to recognize that and get your weight on your feet and off your hands so you can move around. I'm Brian Legale. You can follow me on Instagram under Bingo Welding. Weld mean well green.